Hello, my name is Mark. My name is Mark. And, and we, we are students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to His Girl TV. Link in bio. Hello there. You're welcome to His Girl TV. Um, this is the only YouTube channel where you can get access to um, history um, lessons, history, CRS, as well as um, government. And all these um, lessons are based on the WASI syllables. So basically, um, it is a channel I recommended for everybody. Uh, being in, in teacher training, SHS, um, teachers, uh, stakeholders, everybody. Good. So today we are looking at the the reasons for the British adaptation of indirect rule in the Gold Coast. Okay, and this is part of the broader topic, um, colonial policies uh, in Ghana, of indirect rule in Ghana. Um, in our previous um, lesson, which um, if you happen to miss of that uh, lesson, I would include the link in the description um so that you can click on it and watch our title it rpk that is the relevant um previous knowledge okay so in that video or in that lesson we looked at um, um colonial policies in west africa in general so we looked at that of uh, french west africa and that of uh, british west, um, um, west africa and so if you go there i think it is important that you, you you watch that video as well so that you can be able to understand the issues being raised here very well and uh, in that lesson we 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 concluded that um in british um, west africa um the british adopted an indirect rule system um to govern the people or to colonize or rule um, the the people and so that is what we are going to look at why did the british um decide to adopt the indirect rule um system or uh, policy um in colonizing or in dealing with their colonies it was not only in the gold coast now ghana but also in other uh, british um, um um colonies like nigeria and co all had indirect rule policy and so uh, yeah but before that before we begin, in case you are experiencing blur, if, 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 if the text are appearing blur on your screen, you can change that, tap on the, on the phone screen and tap on there is this surround thing. Um, of course, that will appear at the top end of your phone or anything you are using. And then you change the video resolution size so that you can get a clear picture of what, uh, of the, of the text, um, on your device good so let's begin with our discussions for today so let's begin with our lesson objectives so our lesson objectives for today is quite simple um, that by the end of this lesson um you should be able to you should be able to um discuss the reasons um, that accounted for the adoption of um indirect rule in the gold coast so why the british um, decided to adopt indirect rule in the gold coast as opposed to um direct uh, um, um rule okay why did they decide to choose the indirect rule system and so basically the reasons are what we are going to look at and then we will explain that well uh okay and then also be able to explain um the colonial policy of indirect rule so indirect rule system when you also ask to explain you should be able to explain what um was the indirect rule um system about what is the meaning of the indirect rule um system that was adopted by the british and so you should be able to explain the whole idea about indirect rule okay so let's begin with the indirect rule first let's start with the introduction Good. So what is the indirect rule about? If you are asked to explain the British um, use of indirect rule, even though we did it in our previous um, video um, in colonial rule in West Africa, in British, in British West Africa, 
let's try and remind ourselves about the meaning of indirect rule. Now, indirect rule was the colonial policy, okay? It was a colonial policy by which African traditional institutions, so African traditional institutions and rulers were used to administer the local areas of the colonies. Thus, the governor ruled the people through the chiefs who were then guided by the district, <clears throat> sorry, but um, um, guided by the district commissioners. All right. And so that is what the indirect rule was about. Now, look at the, the main, um, uh, um, the people that played a major role in the indirect rule were the chiefs, okay, uh, district commissioners, as well as the governor who was appointed by the um, by the monarch or the queen who just died quite uh, recently and um, the whole of Africa, uh, people were grieving and people were also having issues with the fact that why should Africans grieve about the death of somebody who spearheaded all what we are going to talk about, you know, with colonialism and stuff like that. Like, but that's a topic for another day. So in the indirect rule system, the British ruled the people through their local chiefs, okay? And the local chief was guided by the district commissioners. And the district commissioners were appointed by the British. So it means that when laws are made or when the British wants to get into contact with the local people, what they do is that they pass it through the chiefs. And then the chiefs will then inform the subject or his subject about what the British intend to do. So that is all what the indirect rule was about. The people were ruled through African traditional institutions and rulers. Okay, now bear in mind that this um, um, policy would be possible only when there is an effective or when there is an, an effective um, political system. That is the only time that this policy would be effective. So what do I mean by that? Now you see, you want to rule people through their chiefs. Okay? And so if the people do not have a well-structured political system, in place there is no way this policy can work out you understand the point that i'm trying to make so that affirmed the fact that african societies pre-colonial african societies before the coming of the europeans had a well centralized system of uh, i mean a well centralized political system and so the British just had to rode on to implement any policy that they so wanted to implement. Okay, good. Now, the question is that what if certain areas or, I mean, certain areas did not have chiefs? What were the British going to do? So what they decided to do was that they created what we called warrant or artificial chiefs in areas where legitimate chieftaincy institutions were lacking you understand so where they did not have a king you know a well centralized um system then the british would appoint a chief on the people all right and these chiefs were known as warrant or artificial chiefs Warrant chiefs because they were given a certificate. So once you were appointed as a chief, you were given a certificate known as a warrant certificate. And that makes them a warrant chief. Which then means that this warrant chief could be distilled and installed or could be appointed and demoted or sacked at any point in time. Okay, so in that way, they were able to rule the people in their colonies, in all the British colonies, West African colonies that you know of. 
okay good so let's then move on now in west africa the concept was first introduced by lord um frederick lugat he was the first um um um, um governor to introduce the idea of indirect rule system in nigeria okay somewhere in 1901 um, okay and so the first um west african country to experiment with indirect rule system was nigeria in 1901 now in ghana or the then gold coast it was introduced by the governor sir gordon gachisbeck sir gordon gachisbeck was the the colonial governor the first colonial governor that introduced this the the indirect rule um policy somewhere in 19 um 19 when he was appointed as the the colonial governor okay good so i think you you have a fair idea about what indirect rule is all about right good so let's look at the the reasons why the british decided to adopt the indirect rule system as opposed um direct rule why didn't they directly rule the people instead they wanted to use indirect rule um system it is simple the first um reason for the the first reason for the british introduction of indirect rule was quite very simple the british government lacked experienced officials to use in the colonial administration so they lacked personnel okay and this was mainly because of the harsh tropical climate in west africa especially most of the of the british officials refused to accept um, uh, appointment into the Gold Coast or into British West Africa because of the tropical harsh conditions that we have talked about. In West Africa, the weather condition is so bad, it's, it's not like that of East Africa or South Africa or even somewhere in North Africa where you have somehow cooler climate. Over here, the rainforest, mosquitoes, the, the the sun shine it's so high here and so most of them upon their arrival in the gold coast or in british west africa died okay and for example most of the missionaries who arrived at the coast of the gold coast died shortly after their arrival okay you can talk of the wife of george mclean who died sh uh, three weeks or so after arrival you can talk of many of the missionaries who died out of malaria most of them did not even spend six months and so that brought about fear and so the british officials refused to accept postings or appointment into these west african colonies especially in the gold coast now interestingly these um europeans i mean described west africa as a white man's grave because of the prevalence of what mosquitoes which gave them malaria and the british or the europeans could not stand mosquitoes as africans could and so they were dying because of malaria you know and so because of that the British could not obtain the required manpower for the direct administration. Okay, so they couldn't have the people to directly rule the, 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 the I mean, the colonies. And so they had to find a way um, to rule the people with less personnel. Now, again, um, the British also lack adequate adequate financial resources uh, should i say adequate inadequate financial of course resources um maybe they were not willing to 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 you know 
to spend on their colonies. Let me put it that way. Now, what happened was that there was an issue of insufficient imperial fund. Imperial fund here has to do with the queen, the crown in Britain. Um, wanting to spend money on their colonies. The British crown was not interested in spending so much money on their colonies. They were not ready to do that. Okay. And so it would be it would be impossible for I mean the British government to adopt the direct rule policy. Okay, now let's take a look at here. The money given to the British colonial administration to administer Ghana, for example, was somewhere in four um thousand euros per annum, four thousand euros for the whole year to administer the Gold Coast. And these monies were largely insufficient to administer the colonies, not only in Ghana, in all the British um, colonies. And of course, that is how um, colonialism is. The, the monarch, the queen, was not ready to spend, or the crown was not ready to spend money on their colonies. But they were ready to take, or uh, to, to gain from these colonies. And, and this explains why a lot of people argue that the British have gained more. I mean, Europeans have gained more than they have spent on their African um, um, colonies. And so people were arguing that why should I, why should Africans be, be crying uh, about the death of a queen who was not ready to spend on his children? I mean, colonies in court. Okay. And so this inadequate financial um, resources uh, was a problem and so they had to adopt indirect rule system and so by adopting indirect rule system what that means is that major i mean the 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 people and the chiefs were going to bear the financial obligation more more than the british okay because the people are are going to bear all the financial obligations, including the chiefs, and the, and then and then the British will bear less. Okay, and so that is how one reason for the adopting the indirect rule system, indirect rule system, as proposed, um, the direct rule system. Now let's take a look at the next point, for the next reason for the adopting of indirect rule in Ghana, was because of language barrier. The British did not understand the local languages. Neither did the people also understand the language of the British. You know, even in Ghana, in Nigeria, in in, in I mean in Gambia and Co. Even the people living in there speak different different ethnic languages. You understand? The people don't even have one language. The people themselves, they can't even speak with themselves. In their local language they don't have one common language i mean let alone the british to you know communicate with them and so the people could not understand english neither could the british also understand the 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 ga the yoruba the chi the akan you know the mandi language and all of that and so it was very very difficult for the British to let their political influence, you know, felt by these um, colonies, because I mean, communication uh, obviously was going to be affected, and so that was the reason why they decided to 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 adopt indirect rule system. So in indirect rule system, um, all that they needed was just an interpreter, okay, and that interpreter would just be communicating between will be a link between the chief and the I mean not even the chief the district commissioners and the um and the chiefs and, and all of that and those were the the times that you you I mean you hear a lot of Africans speaking um short short English I mean those times the interpreters were like uh, master say you come go sit down so master say go don't come again. No, that's sure, 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 no uh, interpretation. And it was quite interesting. Now, again, one reason why the, the British also adopted the indirect rule system was the fact that 
there was already in existence an effective um, political institution. So there was already an effective political institution in existence in the various colonies or West African colonies. All the societies in, 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 in West Africa had chiefs or queens. They had a laid down um, political system that they followed. And so if you read your notes in SHS 2 or year, um, year 11, you realize that you will learn about political uh, organization of the airways, the political organization of the of the of the ancient Egyptian, the political organization of the Bantu, the West African um, forest and coastal states, the Western Sudanese, because those people that the British came to meet had an effective political system. And don't forget the British themselves had this type of system where the queen was a ruler. So if they come and meet another group of people with a king or a queen as the ruler, it was not going to be anything new to them. So there was already an effective political institution in the various colonies that they came to, you know, uh, meet. Okay. And so some of these people were ruled by kings. Some of these African states were ruled by emperors. Others were ruled by chiefs. Others were ruled by queens. And to be, I mean, to give you uh, an example, Asante, for instance, had a world political um, system with the king who ruled, and, and then under him were many other kings. You go to the Yoruba, you go to the Dahomey states, they all had well planned political system. So, the high idea is that the British did not want to um, um, destroy the already existing um, political system, they did not want to destroy it. They wanted to maintain it, okay, and so, so that when they maintain it, they can be able to rule the people through the chiefs, and that is one striking um, um, difference between um, French West Africa, that the 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 policy of assimilation um, to the policy of indirect rule. The policy of assimilation in French West Africa it destroyed the chiefs entirely. You know, it overthrew the chieftaincy system and everything. But in colonial rule, they maintained the chieftaincy institutions and then rode on it to implement any policy but that they wanted to, to implement. Yeah, so in a way, that was good. But then, in another way, it also had its own I mean, effect. Let's look here. So you see that even though they wanted to maintain this political system, what happened was that Whereas previously, the mandate of the chiefs were exercised, I mean, the chiefs exercised their power, had, I mean, derived from their own people. Now, authority were going to emanate from the colonial authorities. So, yes, they don't want to destroy the chieftaincy system. They want to uh, maintain it. What that means is that the chiefs are no more going to be responsible to their subjects, but rather they are going to be responsible to the British officials because initially, before the introduction of indirect rule and the coming of the Europeans into, into West Africa, the chiefs derived their powers from the people or from his subject. And so now that the British have come in, the chiefs are no more going to derive their power from the people but then they are going to derive their power from the British. So their power is going power is going to emanate from the colonial authorities. It means that the colonial authorities have the power to depose or to appoint or to do anything that they wanted to do with these um, um, chiefs, which of course was not a traditional uh, a traditional, you know, um, 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 I mean, traditionally, that was not accepted. It is, the, it is the people that install a king, and it's the same people that would install. But here, it is going to change. So you see that gradually, the positions of the chiefs are gradually limiting. And I like this topic because it explains to you 
how come today our political institutions african political traditional sorry african traditional political institutions lack that power to implement um, certain things today if you look at country a country like ghana for instance i mean kalam say uh, gold mining illegal gold mining has taken over and people some people are accusing chiefs of of keeping quiet now look at this here even though the british said that they wanted to to maintain the effective i mean they wanted to maintain the traditional um system which was good but then they ended up destroying it because chiefs as in this policy were going to be stooges they could be deposed at any time by the british not their not by their people chiefs were going to be responsible to the people uh, to the british not to the people and so you see that in as much as we are saying that maintaining the traditional institution was good in 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 other ways it was it was really really uh, not a good thing and so today our chiefs african chiefs we don't see their role in 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 politics okay and you you recall in our lessons in the um, during the constitutional um, developments in the gold coast and i have all the videos there you can go and check you realize that there was this argument back and forth between the chiefs and the educated elite okay because the educated elite felt that they were they had been to education so they were to rule the people because of some of these things that we just talked about because in that indirect rule what that means is that the people the chiefs are going to be stooges and that was undemocratic and so in a way i mean the british also contributed to the destroying of our um, traditional system so let's look at the last one and then we'll bring our discussion to an end there was also an effective um tax um system you know and all these things you have learned it in your previous uh, um lessons that is somewhere in, in form two and year 11. you know the political system the of 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 african countries were so complete that it had almost every feature a, a proper taxation system was in place in the political system or administration so there was no need for the british to to bring in any new thing okay the traditional uh, um of the societies had a well laid organized um system of what of taxation or tax regime through which the people were levied and then of course proceeds were were uh, were collected from the people and were safely kept in their treasuries and these treasuries were kept by the chiefs so we you you recall that some taxes were paid in, in cash and others were paid in kind to the traditional um, rulers you you remember all of that and so the traditional chiefs and kings had a way of collecting tax or levy from the people and so the british know, knowing this uh, you know um, um felt that then they should maintain that and then a ride on that to take place and so with this administration or with this system of tax and regime in place now the British got convinced that no obstacle would be encountered if they introduced any form of system to um, finance the local administration. You understand? Because they felt that if this is already there, the people are already paying tax to their chiefs. So if we ask them to pay, I mean, this tax, we, we, we ask the chief to tell them to pay this tax for us, that is not going to be any problem. And that is what the British thought okay good so at least we've had about five or so points um um in the reasons for the british adopting of indirect rule um system in ghana good so um this is a try work for you you can try your hands on this it says mention in the three um governors who served in ghana between 1900 to 1957 and then also uh highlight the new four um, reasons for the introduction of indirect rule um, indirect rule in Ghana by the British and this is a wasi question that came I think last year 2021
good so um thank you for your time please don't go without subscribing to the channel um appreciate the work that we are doing uh, show your support by subscribing and um come back for more if you have any topic that you want us to look at for you you can also um you can write it in the comment section and we will be glad to do that for you uh, thank you very much